process for installing the front suspension is the same on both sides of the truck. During the teardown process, the OEM suspension bushings and ball joints were removed from the upper and lower control arms so that they may be reused in the APG control arms. The APG control arms are engineered with very low tolerances to ensure longevity of the bushings and ball joints. This makes them very difficult to install at room temperature. It's recommended to place the upper and lower control arm bushings and ball joints into a freezer overnight before installing them into the APG arms. The freezing process slightly shrinks the components, making them easier to install into the new arms. The lower control arm bushings are best installed using a shop press and the proper size cups for the bushings. Make sure it fits snug around the rubber and not on top of it. Using a 20 ton press and a proper cup, install the upper and lower ball joints into the APG arms. Reuse the factory C-clips to retain the joints in place. Repeat this process for both upper and lower control arms on the left and right side of the vehicle. The upper control arm bushings are best installed using a ball joint removal or press tool and the proper size cups for the bushings. Make sure it fits snug around the rubber and not on top of it. The ball joint removal tool can be placed into a table vise as shown with the control arm in place. Using a heavy impact gun, tighten the threaded rod to press the bushing into the upper control arm. Repeat this process for both bushings on the upper control arms on both left and right side of the truck. Begin installing the suspension components onto the truck beginning with the lower control arm. Install the lower control arm in the correct orientation, but do not tighten the hardware holding the bushings in place. Simply tighten them by hand. The upper and lower control arm bushings need to be fully tightened when the truck is back on the ground to prevent damage to the bushings. Next, the coilover or shock will need to be installed. APG's front suspension system is designed to work with aftermarket performance coilovers and shocks, as well as factory shocks. Begin by installing the top of the shock into the coil bucket, finger tightening the hardware that holds it in place. Install the lower shock mount on the APG lower control arm. Snug tight the upper shock nuts and lower shock bolts. These will be torqued to the manufacturer's suggested torque spec once the vehicle is on the ground again. Install the spindle and hub assembly to the ball joint and install the nut holding it in place. Be cautious not to let the spindle fall, it's very heavy. Do not torque these down just yet. The APG Pro Runner front suspension system is wider than the factory front suspension, thus requiring the use of a supplied extended CV axles if the truck is equipped with four-wheel drive. These CV axles are left and right specific as they have a male and female end with the front differential. Identify the correct CV axle for each side and begin installing by inserting into the front of the differential. This may require some force to slip the axle past the retaining ring. Sometimes a couple small taps with a rubber mallet will help. Before installing the outer end of the CV axle into the hub assembly, the upper control arm must be loosely installed. Hold the upper control arm in place and insert the long bolt from the rear of the truck towards the front. This may require a few taps from a rubber mallet to fully seat it in place. Hand tighten the nut on the front side of the upper control arm. This nut will be fully tightened when the truck is back on the ground. Now you can slip the axle into the hub assembly, rotating the spindle up to assemble the upper ball joint into the head of the spindle. Loosely thread the upper ball joint nut to hold the spindle in place.
Loose leaf thread the 35 millimeter axle nut onto the end of the threaded shaft. Begin tightening down the lower ball joint, using a hex key to hold the joint from spinning while tightening the nut. Repeat this process for the upper ball joint. Use a heavy impact gun to tighten the CV axle shaft nut onto the shaft. Check for movement or play after tightening. The steering tie rods must also be extended using the supplied tie rod extension kit. Thread the smaller diameter end of the extension to the steering rack. Thread the supplied jam nut and heim joint onto the larger diameter end of the tie rod extension. This heim will be used to install in a reverse rotation. Thread this joint in fully for now. It can be adjusted before the truck is properly aligned. Position the spindle so the tie rod can reach the steering knuckle. Install the supplied misalignment spacer and the bolt through the heim joint. Be sure to first seat the misalignment spacer with the heim joint straight to prevent a difficult installation. Assemble the heim joint onto the steering knuckle as shown, with the tapered end being inserted up into the knuckle itself. Tighten the nut on top of the steering knuckle. The brake line bracket at the union of the hard line and flex line must be relocated to allow for the increase in wheel travel. There's enough hard line along the frame to easily move this bracket to a lower position, just above the cross member. Be cautious not to kink the brake line while moving it down. Use a tech or a self-tapping screw to secure the bracket in place. Reinstall the brake line bracket onto the spindle using the factory hardware. Once the bracket is tight, use a crescent wrench to bend the bracket straight back and down as shown in the video. This will allow for more slack in the flexible brake line hose. Reinstall the ABS sensor into the hub. Be careful not to over tighten the bolt holding it into place. Reinstall the ABS sensor wire bracket to the front of the spindle and tighten the bolt holding it in place. The ABS sensor wire is held to the upper control arm using two cable clamps. It's recommended to first install the arm in place so you can accurately place the wire on the bottom side of the arm. Place the wire within the cable clamp and use the supplied P clamps and bolts to hold the wire to the upper control arm.